Hi right, guys, Buildzoid here, and this is going to be a quick little chat with you about the new AGSA 1006 uh, 2.4 BIOS for the Tai Chi. So I've not done like a conclusive testing at this point, but I have done some testing that I feel like I can give you some tips on how to uh, overclock your uh, memory on this. So first of all, um, let's go over some of the tweaks wrong keyboard. Let's go some, over some of the things that AGSA 1006 fixes. First of all, this isn't broken, so good job, Azrock. Uh, you haven't managed to break that again. Um, you get a bunch of new memory ratios. So this is 3200 right now, but I'm at high, uh, you know, I'm at high BCLK. So if I drop the BCLK down to 100, then we get the proper ratios, which is 32. So basically, you get uh, several new ratios. You get 2800. That's new. Uh, 3666, uh, that's new. Uh, 3333, that's new. 3466, 3600, 3733, 3866, and 4000. So you get all of these new memory ratios. This one is not going to boot. I'm. It's not like, say, Z270, where the 4266 uh, ratio isn't compatible. Like, th that ratio will never, ever boot, even though the CPU is capable of doing more than 4200, uh, 40. 4266 just fine as is the memory um on ryzen 4000 will not work because the memory controller cannot do ddr 4000 speeds as of right now and actually i think at this point it's going to be a case of we're going to need a uh, new silicon so maybe the apus maybe ryzen Pl zen plus maybe the new rumored b2 stepping um if that one ever gets to because b2 will be used for the server chips uh, as well as probably Threadripper, but I'm not sure if we'll be seeing B2 on the mainstream Ryzen. Maybe once stocks of, you know, whatever stepping we're on right now run out, run out, then they'll uh, switch to the B2 stepping. But if you're on the current sort of state of Ryzen, you're not doing 4000. In fact, you're probably not doing 3866 or 3733. Um... Both of these, like, 3866, I don't think I've ever seen. I've seen a few people, like, I actually, no. I've seen one or one CPU, I think, which did 3900. So, 3866 is possible if you have, like, a... If you've won the silicon lottery for your memory controller. Um, but otherwise, you're looking at sort of 3733, 3600, 3466. Um, really, even 3733 is hard for most CPUs. So 3600, sort of the 3466 is where you're probably going to end up at. Um, so that's cool. If you're not using Samsung BDI, you get, I think a lot of AFR people are getting a bump from 2933 to 3066. So, you know, good there. Um, if you're on double dual ranked sticks that aren't BDI, because dual ranked BDI can do 3200, it's just hard. I've... I've seen a few people manage it. I'm not sure. I don't have enough BDI to test multiple. Like, I don't have four sticks of RAM that works on Ryzen. Literally. That's just, like, that's what I deal with. So, I have one good kit of RAM that works on Ryzen, and that's currently in the system. Uh, but, yeah. So, if you're on, like, you know, four ranks of memory or, like, dual... Like, if you're on 32 gigs or... Um, well, four sticks of 16 would be the same problem, but if you're on... So basically, 16 dual ranked, uh, with 16 gigs of dual rank sticks, or 32 gigs, or 64 gigs of RAM, um, yeah, you're looking at major problems. I think 30, if you're on 64 gigs of RAM, I don't think you're actually going to be able to break the 3 gigahertz barrier. I'm not sure, you know. I've never even seen a 16 gig stick of memory, so... Yeah, that's, that's my, my memory collection is nowhere near, like, because I go, when I, like, a lot of other overclockers prioritize, like, memory binning and having the right motherboard and the right CPU, and I prioritize GPU collections, so, yeah, um, I don't really have a great selection of RAM for testing, so I, I don't know how anything, you know, like, if you have two sticks, two eight gig sticks of BDI, it's gonna go great. If you don't have that, I have no. I, it might be better. It might be worse. I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, but you do get a bunch of new ratios, which is cool. Uh, you also get a bunch of new memory timings, and with them a whole host of new problems. I know. Um, so the thing is, the memory controller, or well, actually, I don't think this is 
at this point, the memory timings are taken away from... So before we had access to these timings, it was basically AMD had straps where they hard-coded in some timings and bam, that's what you got when you set that memory multiplier. The problem then was like AFR wouldn't do three gigahertz at all and that kind of thing. So a lot of memory kits didn't work properly. And the main reason for that was the memory straps were really, really aggressive, like really, really low, high performance memory timings. And unfortunately, most memory can't do them. That's why you ended up with the situation of if you want to get, you know, 3200 or more, you need to run BDI memory because it's just not going to boot otherwise. Um, because all of these timings that we now have accessible, as well as some that we still don't have accessible, were way too tight. Um, so, you know, we, we now have access to these timings, except the BIOS is no better at setting these up. So, a few things I've noticed. Um, on its own, the Ryzen, like the Tai Chi, will give you a really, really loose RAS to RAS delay. Both of these will be like, 14 or something ridiculous, which you can't even actually set 14, but it'll default it to four, like memory settings that are looser than what you can physically type in. And it's just, it's not stable. That's the short way to put it. It's just not stable. It's not going to run. Uh, for activate window, again, it just sets something ridiculously loose. Doesn't actually do anything for sta stability. Uh, these get set tight for some reason. These go, go too low, I think. Um, this gets set tight, I think, as well, as in too low. Um, this, I have no idea. I ha can't really, like, I'm basically, I've compared the Ryzen timings against, like, Z270 timings and basically went off of that. Um, and eventually I managed to get 3520 to pass Super Pi 32 million. I haven't yet tested with Memtest, but if I left all of these settings on auto, I wasn't even passing Super Pi. So... The As of right now, AGSA1006 has a lot of work to be done in terms of optimizing what the boards load up for memory settings uh, for given memory kits. I'm not sure if it's because my memory kit is not necessarily on the supported memory list. I never checked it. But, like, the timings this thing defaulted to were just awful. Like, there, there was no way in hell these were posting. So, like, this was really, really low. This was, I think, defaulting to, like, 1 or something. Uh, so I loosened that out. TRDWR was po setting really low. Uh, TCWL, um, which for some reason is not at the 18 I've set it to, but oh well. Um, read to pre, I think I had to set manually to 12. I had to set both of these to 7, which reminds me, these also default to 6, which wasn't real. It, like, I basically went through the timings and loosened out the ones I knew first, and... Um, so I'm not sure if I could drop these back down, but basically a lot of these timings were just ridiculously low and it wasn't working. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to disable you want to disable gear down mode um, if you're overclocking and the reason why you want to disable it is otherwise CPU Z can't even read your memory settings as well as it just messes with stability. So yeah, the other thing it breaks is you can't set a command rate of 2T. Um, which my RAM wouldn't necessarily need, but I was doing it just because I was having a hell of a time with getting stability, so I basically started loosening out things to as far as they would almost go. Um, you don't really, like, if you just max out all of your timings, you're actually going to lose stability, okay? They're, you, you can't just whack them to the ceiling, but basically I was going through and going like, okay, I can, I, I know I've seen this looser on other platforms, I'm, I'm going to loosen that out, loosen this out. And eventually I got it booting, but yeah. Um, if you just leave the timings on auto, it gives you this weird mix where, say, say like TCKE likes to default really, really high, um, which is really unnecessary because here I have it at eight and I think default was like 12 or 14, like, or yeah, it defaults to like 11 at 3200. And then as you go up the memory clock speed, it gets really, really bad. While like these other settings are just kept really, really low which basically means you don't pick up any stability while you're losing performance because timings that wouldn't need to be so freaking tight get, well, so freaking loose, get really, really loose. So right now it looks like AGSA1006 has a lot of fine tuning to do as far as the timing settings from the motherboard vendors. But if you know what you're doing, you should be able to basically get like really nice overclocks working right now um, because you do have access to all of these settings which are key for getting stability. Um, because 
yeah, I managed to get this all the way from basically I would boot, get to Windows, and crash out of Windows before it even ran Super Pi to it actually finished 32 million um, at two different sets of settings on consecutive reboots. It still takes a while to post uh, once you start pushing aggressive memory settings, but it once it gets to the OS, it's more or less stable. Again, not Memtest 86, but, you know, different criteria. You're just going to spend more time fine-tuning it, maybe. Really depends. I might get lucky and these settings that I have right now will work when I do Memtest 86. But yeah, you're going to want to go through your timings and manually set them up on the Tai Chi if you're pushing above 3200. Um, even if you're just using the multipliers, you're still going to have to loosen them out because the board just does silly, silly things to the settings. Um, and you're also, you can also tighten up a lot of the timings that it defaults really, really loose for no reason. Um, you also get these new settings, which I have no idea what to do. Um, these are unique to AMD as far... No, they're not probably not unique to AMD, but I've never checked them out on any other platform, so... I have no idea how to deal with them. They are there. Um, I'm probably going to have to ask somebody to, to, like, explain these to me, because... That there... That there is not a description. <laughs> okay? Um... But, you know, this, this really isn't that bad. Uh, a lot of board vendors do this. So, yeah, basically, on the new AGSA, I'm fully capable of running 3520 with 16, 16, 16, 36 timings with all of the following sub-timings. And this works. Um, th this runs SuperPy 32 million, which is better when, than when it was on auto. So, you do need to manually fine-tune your timings. Uh, other things that have changed, not really. Um... P states are broken. I think I've mentioned that. Uh, and, like, completely. Like, you're not posting them. Um, I think you've gotten some new settings in... Yeah, there's this. Which I don't know what it does. So, I can't tell. Like, sorry, I can't tell you. Wrong button. Um, but, yeah. Wait, I was doing 3520 at 1.35 volts. Whoa, <laughs> I just impressed myself. I swear, I thought I was at 1.45. Well, damn. I mean, it makes sense because this memory kit is rated for 3733 at 1.35 volts. Um, but yeah, it just goes to show that the board can't time for garbage. Because I was trying to post 3520 at like 1.45 volts or something. Like, I had a lot of voltage on that with those memory sticks. And it wasn't doing anything for stability because... If the sub-timings are wrong, then they're freaking wrong, and it's not going to be stable no matter how much voltage you push through it. So, yeah. Um, new AGSA. I mean, there is promise of a bright future at this point. Like, we, 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 you know, it's like I can see the freaking light. I mean, I saw it on 3200 because there was BCLK overclocking. But at this point, I can confidently say there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, it's just going to take a while for some of these board vendors to clean up the BIOSes to the point where you can just set a memory ratio and let the timings sort themselves out. Um, some memory kits, I imagine, don't have this problem, but mine certainly does. Uh, you know, I'm not made of RAM, so it's not like I can exactly test anything else than what I have. And what I have is really, really bad. I mean, I have some X99. Basically, I have two kits which are designed for X99. Um... And those don't work on Ryzen, like, at all. And then I have this kit from Team Group, which works really, really good. Just at, at 3200, this kit absolutely crushes it. Um, it clocks really, really great. Uh, it works great on Z270, works great on Ryzen. Um, and the thing is, you just have to, if you're running it on Ryzen, you do have to manually set up all your timings because the board won't do it for you. Um, which really isn't the worst thing ever to have because the same issue applies to, like, some Z2... Like, so you'll run into the same issue if you go on certain Z270 boards. So this this is just usual teething issues. It's still not as bad as, like, X99. <laughs> it's still not as bad as RAM on X99. Because um, here, like... On X99, I've basically never managed to achieve, like, full stability. Uh... Ever, I think? I don't know. But it's like, X99 is just like, no. <laughs> I hate RAM on X99. But, yeah, the new AGSA um, is promising. Um, you, if, you're, if you're already trying to use it, then 
on the Tai Chi at least, you're going to have to set up a, quite a lot of your memory. Like, you might end up having to dig around through your memory settings down here. Um, but if you're not, like, some other boards I imagine might have less issues. Um, but I, I really only have this board and only this memory kit, so I can't really do that much testing on this. Um, as much as I would like to do more. But, uh, yeah, um... You know, eventually this will all work, and I'm, I'm going to go and be like, yeah, here here's a conclusive Ryzen overclocking guide, and it's going to be like three hours long. Um, but yeah, no, that that's it for uh, this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it informative, uh, even if not particularly entertaining. And uh, yeah, I, I hope it helps you with uh, getting your memory stable on the Tai Chi, um, potentially any other uh, ASRock boards that might run into the same issues because a lot of these motherboard vendors it's like if one of their motherboards does it then pretty much all of their motherboards do it too um and it's just to a lesser or greater extent in some direction or other so yeah um you know if you are updating to agsa 1006 and you're not seeing huge gains in memory overclocking capability try manually try uh try doing manual subtimings. Unfortunately, most of you won't be able to just go and refer to a, you know, Z270 timing readout from a board that's really, really good. Because that's basically what I did. I just checked what my memory settings on Z270 were, and I was just like, okay, well, just try that, because some of these timings don't make any sense. Um, and that eventually led to the settings I have now. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to push it higher from here. Um, but, yeah, um... I'm going to stop dragging it out at this point. So thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Leave a comment down below about or about literally anything. If you would like to support what I do here at Actually Hardcore Overclocking, you can go. Uh, there's a link down in the description for sure. It's the Patreon, the PayPal, as well as the HOC Junkyard. It's all in one link. Um, so, yeah, it's not separate links. It's just one, and then there's more links on that page to all the other ways you can support AHOC. Um... So yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching and goodbye.